Yeah, you know you're not really a couch potato, but right now, when it comes to getting out and actually doing a ride, it certainly doesn't feel like it. As many of you will already know, the hardest part of any ride is getting your sorry ass from here, off the sofa, out the front door, and then onto the bike. And then once you're sat on the bike and actually pedaling, you start to really enjoy it. If only you could make that process a little bit easier. Well, today I'm gonna to share with you five secret hacks to do exactly that. More often than not, the ride itself isn't actually the problem. It's our minds and our imaginations coming up with all kinds of reasons why we shouldn't go out for a ride. So for instance, we might start thinking that it's going to be too long or too difficult, and then we end up procrastinating and finding other more important things to do, such as checking our emails or Googling for pictures of cats riding penny farthings. And then we put it off and we put it off, and before we know it, it's 11 o'clock at night, it's time for bed and you haven't done your ride. But never mind, you can always do it tomorrow. And we all know how that plays out. One way of overcoming this fuzzy logic kind of thinking is to have a specific time to do your ride. And that doesn't matter if it's an actual time of day or after a particular event. Now, a few years ago, I used to do a spinning class and I knew that that class started at six o'clock every Tuesday evening. And if I wanted to do it, I had to be there at that time on that day. And it didn't matter how lazy or lethargic I felt. If I wasn't there, that class would start without me. And lo and behold, I used to attend most of them. And it's the same kind of thing that you need to do for your cycling. So for instance, if you say to yourself, I will do my ride at 11 o'clock, or I will do my ride after breakfast, then the chances of you actually doing that ride increase greatly. Another obstacle that can get between you and your ride is fretting about all of the faff you need to go through before you do your ride. So for me personally, particularly at this time of the year, it's a right ball ache when I start thinking about all of the winter cycling kit that I need to wear. So to make things easy, what I've done, I've gone up and I've located all of the items of clothing that I need to wear, and then I've put them in one very easy to get to convenient place. So I'm not hunting around for them when I'm trying to get dressed. And then that way, that's one less thing I need to worry about before my ride. Another way to get you on the bike is to start off by doing something very small that's going to be very quick and very easy. And then the logic there is that that will prompt you to go on and do something slightly more difficult. And then that will prompt you again to go on and do something even more difficult again and so on and so on. And then you go out and do your ride. So again, using myself as an example, what I'll do is after I finish my shower in the morning, I go back into the bedroom and I will put my heart rate sensor on. And that is very, very quick and very, very easy. And usually what happens then is I think, well, okay, I'll just put my cycling shorts on and I put those on and then I start putting my top layers on. And before I know it, I'm fully dressed for my ride. So I'll come down, have my breakfast. And when I finished, I think, well, I'm dressed now for a ride. I might as well go out and do it. And of course, the classic reason why many people don't go out and cycle is of course the weather. But in this day and age of weather apps and meteorological websites, there's absolutely no excuse not to know what the weather's going to do. And if you can find a gap in the weather when, for instance, it's not raining, then that is the ideal time for you to go out and do your ride. Quite often, usually when we're feeling particularly lazy, the ride itself can put you off. And that's when you start thinking about how far it is or how difficult it's going to be. And what I would suggest in this instance is that you tell yourself that it's okay to go out and do just a short ride. Now, how far a short ride is, is entirely up to you. 
For some people, it might be 25, 30 kilometers or so. For others, it might be 10 kilometers. And again, for others, it might be as little as one kilometer. But it doesn't really matter because once you've done that minimum distance, you'll probably find that you're enjoying yourself and you want to carry on for a bit further. And it's the same kind of thing happening when you suffer from what I call direction dilemma. And that's when you're sat at home thinking about where you actually want to cycle. You come up with all of these routes, which for one reason or another you write off, uh, and then you just don't know where you want to ride. And again, in that instance, what I would suggest is just getting on the bike and cycling. And then when you get to a junction, you turn left or you turn right, or you go straight on and you just carry on like that. At the end of the day, our unconscious mind is there to protect us from situations that it thinks are going to be painful, difficult or unpleasant. But in many ways, it's like a child in the sense that it can't see past the short term pain and onto the long term benefit. But the good news is that if you ignore it often enough, it does become easier. Now, you may well have conquered the unconscious mind, but if the conscious body is too cold while you're cycling, you're not going to get far. And if you'd like to know what to wear this winter to stay warm, then I suggest you watch this video just here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.